Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. No technical difficulties this morning. Nope. We got to figure it out. So our mic is back in business. No glitches um, in the matrix. For yeah. Me. Yeah. We, uh, we survived another week. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm sure everyone's been, it's been a pretty hectic week. Uh, we've had quite an influx of calls. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of issues going on. Yeah. The flooding. Flooding. Um, we kind of just, I think last week's show, we just kind of, it just started happening yeah. like just then. We didn't really have like a recap, so we thought we'd kind of start today's show by kind of discussing that. Um, but all, pretty much all water calls. So many. Um, so many. I can even see our after hours, you know, sometimes we get um, sometimes 10 to 12 after hours calls yeah. after the 5 p.m. So um, you can only imagine how many we're getting during, throughout the daytime. So um but yeah, everybody, I know we kind of talked about ice damming last week, but I think we're pretty much probably past most of that. Um, For the most part, yeah, at least the, the forecast we've been seeing, you know, we're not showing any more major yeah. snow events in the near future. Yeah. That lake is still warm, so the threat's still there. Yeah, but it's almost hard to believe that we were already almost through February. Well, we just started February, but essentially almost, we're almost at the tail end almost. Yeah, we're on the downhill slope now. Spring is coming. Yep. And uh, with that in mind, we decided today we were going to talk to you guys a little bit about the water damage and then the possibility of mold developing, uh, especially in the spring as temperatures start to warm up and yeah. any unnoticed water damage, you know, starts to bloom. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to pull that up right now so you guys get a better idea here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Imagine doing some renovations in your home and finding that fun behind the wall. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's the scary part is with drywall and things like that. Somebody just wants a quick cover up or anything like that. They'll just slap a piece of drywall on there and then in hopes almost like that you'll never ever notice it. Yeah. Uh, well, fortunately, as we know, you know, mold feeds on organic matter yeah. and the paper backing to drywall is a buffet. It soaks up water. Drywall itself will yep. wick up water uh, as it soaks and that gets the ball rolling. It's, yeah. it's hidden damage. You don't know until it begins to bloom. Yeah, kind of like, um, oh, speaking of which, Don had his first presentation. Yes, I did. Uh, this week, and went very well. Um, it was over at Envision Real Estate, and the reason I was bringing it up is because we did bring up, um, while we were there, how fast drywall can soak up. Yes. Um, you know, within 24 hours, you're looking at least maybe foot and a half, two feet of, fair About to say, that. you know. Yeah, after only 24 hours, if you just took a chunk of drywall, stuck in a bowl of water, yeah. and waited a day, you'd see the water lines start to rise. And... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, so you can just kind of see how quickly it can escalate there, too. Um, cool. So we got some other uh, slides in here. We're going to kind of hint at uh, preventing mold growth mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of end it with um, areas in your home where you can most likely potentially find some mold growth as well. And I want to make sure that all our viewers, you know, kind of know some of the signs to look for yeah. and things to be vigilant of uh, yeah. in the, with the upcoming warm up. Yeah. And. I mean, this is no stranger to us, and I think we've kind of discussed this before, yeah. um, how people tend to, I mean, even us, there's, we, we can't, I can't, like, walk into a room with Don and look at mold and know exactly what type of mold it is, um, given the fact that there is hundreds of thousands of different types of species. Um, so, I guess with that being said, we always bring in, like, a mold assessor um, to, uh, a, to, so we can actually break down what's actually in the air. And just so you folks know, you know, if you do have a mold issue, it is required by law that the mold assessor and the mold remediation company be two separate entities. Yep. So if you're calling some other company and like, oh yeah, we do all our own mold assessments, that's that's not kosher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you gotta make sure you have two separate companies. Yep. Uh, and they'll usually have like a assessor's like certification hmm. always usually attached in the report itself. So at the end of every re mold report, you'll see, oh, who was my mold assessor for this report? Right. Um, so, yeah, um, we're kind of going through here. Um, a lot of people do panic about mold. You know, yeah. I think it's deadly. That's not necessarily true. You know, it, it is a natural thing. I, yeah. I classify it kind of like roaches. Yeah. You know, roaches are a biological necessity. They are a garbage disposal. Same yeah. with the little pill bugs. You know, they yeah. break down heavy metals in the soil. Mold in and of itself is needed we have to have mold. Yeah. not not to mention the fact that without mold you don't have like cheese or beer beer or all the right yeast is a mold yeah you wouldn't you have know. your nice breads and all this type of stuff too 
but it's the ones that are growing in the walls. They start to yeah. develop. You know, you get the allergic reactions. Uh, you start to feel a little bit sick sometimes. It's not unless you're very, very young, elderly, or yeah. you know, compromised. Mold shouldn't have any long-lasting health effects, according to the science. Yeah. Uh, beyond allergic reactions. Sure. And what's interesting too, um, and you can see it here in the slide too. Like it's interesting, like without mold. I always go back to that one explanation. We'd be like knee deep in trash when you really think about it because um, it wouldn't have the ability to break down all of these types of materials. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it, they are important to the environment, just yeah. not inside our homes and buildings. No, definitely not. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to make sure. Yeah. So, uh, these are, I pulled these from our presentation because I thought these were some very useful slides. Um, but, it needs, it's critical, obviously, you, if it has the food source and it has the proper environment mm -hmm. for it to thrive, um, it's going to do so on, until it's rectified. Yeah, just three things, moisture, the right temperature, and a food source. Yep. That's all it takes. Yep. Because uh, mold spores are present pretty much everywhere. Yeah. There's mold spores here in our room. There's mold spores wherever you're sitting and watching. There's mold spores in your homes. Yeah. They're natural. They're everywhere. Um just like a lot of types of bacteria, it's when the conditions are right for them to get, mm -hmm. and moisture is always, always a, yeah. the top condition for mold growth. Oh yeah. And it really doesn't matter what time of year it is either, because if like your basement is like the perfect atmosphere, mm -hmm. um, and, and chances are your, your lights are off, obviously you're have you're creating a, a dark, damp atmosphere. Um, and we're going to get to that here in just a moment where we can see these types of things. Um, but thank you for bringing that up as well. This is Don's room, actually. No. <laughs> uh, so just kind of, we already, we actually just discussed this. So um, this is just kind of just another photo, but without proper ventilation, uh, dry environment and lack of food source, that's going to help right. significantly. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know if you want to maybe, I'll cover half of this, you want to cover the other half? Sure. I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are the, the top 10 places that we find that a lot of homeowners and building owners don't automatically think about when they think of moisture damage. Yeah. So you have your dishwasher. You might have a leak in the pipe behind the dishwasher. You're not noticing that. It's not leaking out onto the floor, into the kitchen. You're not seeing it. But back behind the dishwasher, you could have some leakage going on. That's going to get the mold going out. Sure. Same thing with ice makers. If your refrigerator has an automatic ice maker or if you're working in a restaurant or some other business where you have ice machines, yeah. hotels, uh, you could end up developing a leak in them as well. Uh, washing machines, yeah. and especially in the property management aspect of it. You know, a lot of these places have banks of washing machines for their tenants, sure. making sure that your connection there is dry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hot water heaters goes without saying. Yeah. Windows, if you don't have a proper seal, if water's leaking in, you get the condensation, the around, you get the condensation builds up, soaks into the wood. Yeah. There could be potential for mold. I like there. the one that you brought about too, um, the ice water connections too, because a lot of these hotels, you got to think, this isn't something you're using just like once right. every like morning or afternoon. This is used 24 seven by people, um, people that are showing up uh, to check in at their rooms potentially at like 11 o'clock at night. So. Um, these types of connections could be very, very at fault for something like very that. Very much, so. very much. Um, toilet connections, obviously that's another huge factor over time, even, um, the proper mechanisms to actually set up the, behind the toilet, mm -hmm. um, can snap and break over time, which can cause, obviously, you know, all of a sudden your water can actually start to rise up out of your toilet. Um, if it's not properly, um, hooked up in the back, yes, can. uh, shower doors, that's a no brainer. Obviously, if you're not, if you have, let's say, glass doors on your shower mm -hmm. and you don't, you're supposed to probably actually squeegee mm -hmm. uh, the glass doors and things like that, too. Um, even your small nooks and crannies within your shower, that moisture tends to drip into. Um, bathtub, same thing. I think if your caulking isn't solid, if you have gaps, if it's le if it's peeling away, yep. water will get down into those holes. Yep. Um, outdoor water sprinklers, too, is probably a huge thing. Also, making sure that you have the water properly shut off during the winter time. So you're not getting any uh, backups in there as well. Um, cool. Uh, this is always, I know it's kind of a basic photo, but it actually speaks very high volumes. Cause I think in the event of an actual situation where let's say I just dropped this bottle of water on the floor, mm -hmm. the first thing I'm really going to think about really all is, Oh, 
it, this carpet has been affected. And that's kind of like what we're just showing you here. Yeah, they only throw down a couple towels, you know, dry yeah. it up that way. And you then know, once the carpet's dry, I should be fine. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but what you're not seeing is, and this is on a larger scale, obviously, if you spilled a bottle of water, you're probably not going to have to worry about the subfloor. But, no. um, but you can kind of see here, like, just even a very small, like, you leave a faucet running, uh, a rag falls in the sink, and it overflows your sink for five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's enough right there to pretty, cause some pretty significant water damage. Um, and I think what a lot of people don't think about are the subfloors and, like, the padding underneath that. Yeah. Yeah, especially um, if you have wood floors, you know, under the wood. That's uh, If it's on the second floor, yeah, second or third floor, you know, you're soaking through. Yeah. Soaking through ceiling. If they're soaking through subfloor, you're soaking back through another ceiling. Yeah. You know, and that, and that stuff spreads. Yeah. And then you apply that same type of mishap over 10, 15, 20 years of, this could be an apartment complex where multiple tenants moving in, mm -hmm. doing the same thing. And then you can quickly see how a building um, could be affected on a much larger level. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, this actually was a good one. I thought these slides were very useful. I feel like it was just definitely something um, I think that kind of helps point, puts you in the right direction as far as knowing like what to look out for. Absolutely. And I don't, you know, and with the uh, coming warm up, a lot of the initial signs, uh, this is going to be a little bit gross, but if you're seeing silverfish, yeah. uh, we've discussed them. I know my first episode here, we discussed yeah. silverfish, but they require a lot of the same conditions that mold requires for activity and growth. So if you're seeing silverfish, yep. can't get rid of them, especially especially on higher floors. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a very good chance that there is water leaking behind a bathtub or a shower. You know, I had a job like that, could not solve the waterfish issue yeah. or the silverfish because I could not get to the area. I see. It turned out that behind the bathtub, there was a break in the caulk. Every time they took a shower, water leaked through. Oh. These things got, you know, back there, started yeah. breeding. They found mold. They found other issues. So it's definitely an important thing to check out. Yeah. Yeah. So always check the seals around, you know, like you were saying with the caulk seals, just make mm -hmm. sure um, you're not seeing anything out of the ordinary or anything like that too. So, yeah. And as always, if you have questions, give us a call. If you'd like an estimate or an inspection, yep. give us a call. There's no risk to it. Absolutely. And if you want to see a picture of the silverfish, uh, Dan just posted one on Facebook, uh, I think it was a few days ago. So they're yeah, pretty so nasty check out looking. Facebook, you should see what they look like. You know, they're not harmful. They're not going to make anybody sick. They're not going to get into anything. They're very weak little creatures. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. yeah. But they look horrible. <laughs> they look like prehistoric things. Yeah, they do. Um, they kind of are. Yeah. And it's funny, actually, when you think about how, how far some of these like animals go back. It's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. How little they've evolved over the centuries. Yeah. They don't need to. They still fill that biological niche. Exactly. Sweet. Uh, we got a little exciting wheel spin for you, too. We uh, pulled some different sound effects. Uh, we found an 8-bit category for on the Wheel of Names where we can go back to, like, the old, like, Super Nintendo days, you know? Yeah, back to the old days. Um, but let's jump right into it. Let's see who our winner is this morning here. <laughs> Three Eleven, this be a good band. Never cared for them. I was at least love Three Eleven. <laughs> All right, Ron Walzak from the JP Rossman. Ron, congratulations! If you're watching, I will drop off a double prize for you. Um, and even if you are not watching, I will still bring you a prize in person. Um, hope everybody's doing well at JP Ross. Haven't stopped in there in a little bit of a while. So, uh, I'll see you guys soon. But, uh, other than that, thank you so much for uh, joining us guys. And, uh, see you next week here at 1010. We will be here. See you guys then. Have a good week.